good afternoon thanks to organizer for having this giving this opportunity to share the seer and i call upon anand uh, to proceed for the excellence topic antimicrobials yeah. as you know antimicrobial is very important one of the important tool in the management of any diseases our main aim is to tackle the microbes antimicrobials organism microorganisms with the repetitive dose of antimicrobials to win the war against infections which cause the disease so in our day to day practice we should select such a drug which should be more effective against any organism which cause diseases so it is the drug of choice just like a key and lock and key the particular key fits particular lock such a drugs we have to select in certain disease before selecting the drugs we must know how to, what is the dose of the drug that is a therapeutic dose of the drug duration of the treatment side effects resistance and sensitivity resistance and synergy effect the drug this should be known to manage the proper management of the drug with this i call upon dr anand to continue the antimicrobials topics thank you thank you sir a very good afternoon to all of you uh, respected chairpersons senior faculty members senior members of the api and uh, my dear colleagues uh, i bring greetings to you from sri bm patel medical college hospital research center uh, actually uh, i am uh, replaced for uh, Uh, Dr. Rajesh Honudi sir, uh, he is a medical superintendent and he was supposed to discuss regarding uh, the antibiotic policy due to some reason he could not uh, attend and I also being the part of this system. Uh, so uh, we discuss about antimicrobial resistance, the resistance has been discussed way long from since morning just uh, sir spoke about anti uh, tuberculosis drugs resistance. So he is, uh, we are going the, carrying the torch next. So what is again important is uh, the physicians, again physicians have resistance to uh, know which antibiotic or which antibacterial should be used in which uh, bacterial growth so that the onus also remains on our side and the next uh, row of bedding physicians that are going to come in the next few years when we start practicing, uh, please understand that there are very very limited antibiotics that are coming in the market and it will be very challenging for all of us to handle a patient in a clinical scenario, especially in ICU and sepsis related cases. So in such situation, it is very relevant to know about antibiotic resistance and antibiotic stewardship that has been coming off late in all medical college hospitals to ensure the resistance rates are coming down or brought down. So what uh, Albert Einstein mentioned that I don't know how World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And I am tempted to employ the quote as an analogy with the use of antibiotics as a weapon to treat infections. So survival of the fittest, we all know the strategic bacteria, so like is for any other organisms. So as a clinician, we have a lot of challenges. By the time the patient comes to a physician for a any treatment he has already taken azithromycin for few days and despite that there is a no control for fever he comes to the physician so this is how the scenario goes on in the clinical uh, aspects and we will discuss a few things about that so we cannot do much to stop that but we can surely slow down the process by reducing selective pressure on bacterial causing infection diseases and at least we as a clinician should be sensible enough to understand when to start antibiotics and when not to start. So prevent or slow the process of acquiring resistance determining the genes. We need a national policy which is practical and implementable and may not be very ideal to begin with and we have to identify our own structures and infrastructures and the antibiotic policy in our hospital. And of course, we can talk a lot about these things, but doesn't happen on the counter sale of the drugs. And I told you a uh, lot of antibiotics are sold on the counter. So health being a state subject, uniform implementation of restriction of antibiotics is a difficult task. Then in many rural and remote areas where inaccessible medical facilities, there is hardly any qualified doctor, but he does the game changer. 
Now, lot of patients we get as a referral to our institute, ICU, many are being already treated by meropenem. And what left to us is again the first line or the lower level of antibiotics to be started. So this is a challenge for all of us. We all are going to face this challenge. And there are certain lack of laboratory infrastructure collecting the monitoring national data. So that is again a challenge. So to overcome this challenge, there was a Chennai declaration that came to rescue us. So Infectious Disease Society was held in August 12, 2012 at Chennai. And this was rightly named as a roadmap to tackle the challenge of antimicrobial resistance. So from then a national draft has been produced and that has been now a roadmap that even the medical microbiologist should be involved in this uh, resistance prevention. So that is how the scenario has been changing. So medical microbiologist has been involved uh, in this stewardship program. So what is antimicrobial resistance? It has been discussed by the previous speaker. So national health policy guidelines, the antibiotic use, limiting the over control of use of antibiotics and pharmaceutical vigilance with prescription audit along with antibiotic usage in hospital committee should be the guidelines. So what is the misuse? When antibiotics are prescribed unnecessarily, when antibiotic administration is delayed in a critical ill patients, Broad spectrum antibiotics are used too generously or any narrow spectrum antibiotics are used incorrectly. When the dose of antibiotic is lower or higher than appropriate for the specific patients. When the duration of antibiotic treatment is either too short or too long. And when antibiotic treatment is not streamlined according to the microbiological cultural data. So here or in all these seven points, somewhere we are also responsible for causing antibiotic resistance. That we should not ignore. If I am wrong, I think that the seniors can correct it. We too, as a physicians, are responsible in one or the other consequences. So resistant microbes, what it leads to? Prolonged illness and increased risk of mortality, as sir also emphasized this. Treatment failures, yes, increased number of infected people in the community. They go on infecting the others. Resistance to the first line, then to second line, and that leads to the th formation of third line drugs, which leads to high cost and treatment failure in most of the patients. And ultimately, you are trying to understand who is the victim for this. Again, we, as the clinicians, our paramedical staff, nurses, who go very close to the patients, and they develop an in infection with resistant organisms. Recently, in a study in Mumbai, where physicians were contacted with an MDR uh, strains, so again, who are responsible and who is, the, who is going to pay for it? We, again. So with that context, we should know. There's a very valid question raised by Dr. Fred Turnover that when do you do, when you are faced with an infection with a very sick patient and you get a lab report and every single drug listed is resistance, what will you do? This is a challenge. Yes, this is a challenge for all of us. We are facing in and out. Okay, so came the what we can do is, we can go for stewardship. So now antimicrobial stewardship concept is coming in all the medical colleges and we have uh, started uh, three years back. So what it refers to is the coordinated interventions designed to improve and measure the appropriate use of antimicrobial agents by promoting the selection of optimal intermediate drug regime, including dosing, duration of therapy and route of administration as our chairperson rightly mentioned that results in the best clinical outcome of treatment. So in our ICU, every second month, swabs cultures are taken and we are told that what, which drug is there. Now recently, we had one patient from, a uh, patient was admitted in uh, other city, Manipal Hospital, in, and he was from local at Bijapur, he was brought to our ICU. And for 15 days, he has been tried with all antibiotics, no relief. And now in our ICU, we have new strain, which we never heard. So that is how the infectious organisms are moving from place to place and that is where stewardship plays an important role. The microbiologist will identify that new organism has come to your ICU and you are the clinician who has to change the antibiotic pattern. So what are the goals? We have to optimize patient safety with right drug, right dose, right duration and most importantly de-escalation. A good clinician knows how to de-escalate the uh, antibiotics at the right time. And second, ensure optimal use of antibiotics by all providers and try to reduce drug resistance as much as possible. So what is our role? What we can do in the stewardship? 
So at least start with an general antibiotic that we use and wait for the culture reports to be come with and you can review after 72 hours of the report. Stop antibiotics in patients with alternative non-infectious diagnosis. Optimize dosing and duration of antibiotic therapy and avoid unnecessary antibiotics. We all know this. We all know this. But in OPD, left and right, we prescribe, most of the clinicians prescribe uh, antibiotics and send. Because by the time patient has come to you, it is already 5 days of fever and you don't want to take chance. But anybody comes with one day fever, you can take a chance. You can wait him. It's a viral. It looks like viral. Wait, wait for the antibiotic to be started. So, what are the good practice? Once culture reports are available, step down to the narrowest spectrum, most efficient antibiotic that is available. Review. Review is very important for the physician. Are we going in the right direction? Patient responding or not responding to the treatment? Or wait for the culture and antimicrobial therapy for the day-to-day -day basis. So what are the good practices we can follow? De-escalate. Try to de-escalate the antibiotic treatment according to clinical situation and microbiological reports. That is very important for a physician. As much as try to possible from IV to oral. If the patient is recovering fast, try to switch out from IV to oral as early as possible. And intravenous can be given up to 72 hours. Again, look for the response. If he is responding well, switch to oral. Use narrowest spectrum antibiotic as possible in your ICU. And if cultures are negative, there is no evidence of infection, please stop antibiotics. Now, what is done in our hospital and as a part of stewardship is we create an antibiogram. So, this biogram is given by the microbiologist. They give the list of the organisms that have been identified in our ICU, critical care unit and UMC wards, dialysis unit, dialysis fluid, everywhere it has been done and the results are given to the clinicians that this month this organism is identified go for this antibiotic from here after so that is how the antibiograms are formed in our institute and it is formed and circulated to all the of uh, this is a team of the microbiologist pharmacist and all these are we are involved in this stewardship so in our institute that's what i'm telling antibiotic auditing is done by the pharmacologist and audit report will be presented on monthly basis to each department. So what we can do in the sepsis protocol, the first hour considered as a golden hour, where is the mortality benefit is there, you can use go for meropenem, cholestin, vancomycin, all those drugs and loading dose to be given should be full dose irrespective of patient condition. Even if it's in renal failure or not, or the, it is uh, uh, whether the indications or not. So always go for a full loading dose as far as sepsis is concerned. So no need to complete the course if is the patient is becoming all right. Three days should be fine. If condition is not improving, then go for five days. So after 48 hours, depending upon the clinical condition or improvement, de-escalate the therapy. Now, once the culture reports are available, go for the specific antibiotic. If cultures are negative, you can rely on procalcitonin, lactate and C-reactive. All are the infective markers for all of us that we all know. So, culture positive sepsis, antibiotics for 7 days. Earlier it was to be 15 days. And deep-seated antibiotics should be, infection should be given 4 to 6 weeks of antibiotics only. So, now there is a concept called antibiotic lock therapy. The dialysis port, the chemo port are all added with an antibiotic solution. Okay, so and uh, locked in for 24 hours. So that will uh, change the uh, organism scenario and help us in the better management of the patients. So what the stewardship does after spending an appropriate samples for cultures, review culture reports, choose empirical antibiotics, go for rapid diagnostic tests like gram stain, can be done, okay, and duration and de-escalation should be the key in interventions. So, this is what I emphasized in the first sentence that newer antibiotics are very sparse. Please, as a physician, next bedding physician, your hands will be tied when you are tying, treating a patient with sepsis in ICU. Okay, so infectious diseases are still common cause of death, but there are shortage of antibiotics. Even if there are good antibiotics, they have been misused by the time it reaches to your hospital. So therefore, we must manage carefully and responsibly what we already are having. Don't expect the new uh, Ramban or a new antibiotic in the next few years. Okay. So, take home message for all of us as a physician is reserve antibiotics for serious patients or higher or broad spectrum. Microbiology investigations after antibiotic treatment should be done. Reevaluate antibiotic usage. Switch IV to oral as early as possible. 
restrict IV or antibiotic usage for not more than five days, choose an excess group antibiotic, and look for the biomarkers. Poor calcitonin, C-reactive proteins are all done in all the centers now and prevent health-related antibiotic resistance by adhering to the strict infection control. So to conclude, the WHO has come with an aware classification of antibiotics in 2019. So A stands for access. First line antibiotics, low resistance potential. You can go for amoxicillin in first 48 hours. Watch the AW, watch stands for watch. Critically important antibiotics, highly resistant potential equinolones and macleods can be used. And resor, that is a very important aspect. We have to resor antibiotics uh, so that this can be used for the, so antibiotics for MDR organisms should be the polymyxin and taglycillin should be reserved for the, only the reserved conditions, okay. So these are my references. Uh, thank you for your patience hearing. <laughs> and I also thanks the organizers for giving me this opportunity on the behalf of the original presenter. Thank you. Yeah, it would be wonderful because probably immunization means we do think it's only in children, but it has become a long way. Probably things are changing and immunization schedules are really changing now. Probably even in adults, probably every, everybody must take some or the other vaccine. Probably Dr. Prabhakar will really highlight those things and give us a fresh thinking about the immunization. Welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, much in sir, depth to you. Thank you very much uh, for enlightening us for the rightful use of uh, antibiotics. And uh, I feel it is okay for uh, the hospital side uh, therapeutic purpose of uh, antibiotics. What about the rural purpose? I feel the clinic, clinical medicine is important. First of all, the, most of the patients, they may come with viral infection. Unnecessarily, we are pushing the antibodies in such cases. So such cases can be avoided by providing the good the clinical practice. And second one is, I feel the facts are the important people who are uh, causing the problem for this antibiotic resistance. Uh, what is your opinion regarding I agree, this? I agree, sir. I raised the issue, same issue, and I have totally agree with you uh, that much we cannot do anything for uh, that much. But let us also practice the good practices. We have seen physicians changing antibiotic every day. So today they have started people seeing tazabactam, next day they go for meropenam, third day they go for celastin. That is also a wrong practice. Okay, so I agree totally with you uh, where the in rural practice, Nowadays, uh, patients are receiving meropenem as a first line of drug. Uh, we need to, and quacks, who has to train them? We can't train. <laughs> I agree with you, sir, but that problem remains. But what we can do as a physician, and when the patient comes to you, in our own setup, how we can prevent antibiotic resistance, uh, that's why the stewardship has come. So, thank you. That brings us to the end of the question and answers. Thank you, sir. We would now like to request the chairpersons, Dr. A.M. Prasanna Kumar and Dr. Vishwanath Navbade to kindly come up on the stage and honor the speaker. We would like to call upon the speaker, Dr. Prabhakar K., Professor of Medicine, SDUMC Kolar, who will be speaking on adult immunization. And the chairpersons for this session shall be Dr. K.M. Shivkumar, Retired Professor and HOD, General Medicine, MIMS Mandya, and Dr. Balchandran G., Consultant Physician, Bangalore. Now, we would like to request the speaker, Dr. Anand P. Anbale, to honor the chairperson, Dr. A.M. Prasanna Kumar and Dr. Vishwanath Navbade. Thank you, sir, for this scholastic talk 